Welcome to another episode of In The Zone. I am your host, Chris Broussard, and we got a great show for you today. My man, one of my favorite interviews, ex-NBA player, NBA champion, Eddie House is in the house, and better yet, in the zone, so we're going to have a great interview with him. But first, as always, I'm going to hit you with a top five. And look, in honor of Eddie House, who was on one of the greatest teams uh, in recent memory, the 2008 Boston Celtics, I started thinking, hmm, who are the best five NBA championship teams of the 21st century? That's from 2000. Onward, not the Showtime Lakers, not the Jordan Bulls, none of that. From 2000 onward, who are the top five teams? Here you go. At number five, the Miami Heat 2013. LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh went on a 27 game win streak and edged the San Antonio Spurs in the seven game series to win their second title. Now, you might be saying, Number five, why so low? Well, here's the deal. Let's face it. They weren't a great fit. They had great players. LeBron is superb. Dwayne Wade's an all-time great player. Chris Bosh will probably be a Hall of Famer. But they didn't fit together that well. I mean, you didn't get the best of each one of them. Dwayne Wade had to kind of back up and let LeBron run the show and be 80% of the player he really was. Chris Bosh, heck. He became a glorified role player. 16 points, six rebounds a game. That's it. So, and remember, they barely edged an older Spurs team. Ray Allen's miraculous three-point shot at the end of game six saved them and allowed them to go on in game seven. Great performance by LeBron and win that second title. So, at number five, Miami Heat 2013. At number four, the San Antonio Spurs of 2007. You might have thought I was going to say 2014 when they ran through Miami, but here's why I didn't. In 2007, Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, and Tony Parker were all in their prime. So they had to be better than the 2014 team because those three players were older. Duncan was virtually a shell of his former self in 2014. Look, in 2007, they swept. LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. And I know everybody wants to say, oh, that Cavs team wasn't any good. All they had was LeBron. But look, that Cavs team had beaten a very good Detroit Pistons team. One they had won a championship, still had Chauncey Billups, Rip Hamilton, Rashi Wallace, and had added Chris Webber and Antonio McDice. The Cavs took them out in six, and yet the Spurs just swept them. So that is the fourth best team of the 21st century, 2007 San Antonio Spurs. At number three, Eddie House's Boston Celtics, 2008. That's probably the first time they ever been called Eddie House's team, but I want to give my man some love. Of course, they had the big three, Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, put it together right away, won the championship in their first year. Those three Hall of Famers fit perfectly. You had three Hall of Famers in their prime who were all willing to sacrifice to win a championship. KG was the defensive force. Paul Pierce was the slasher, the guy they tended to go to in the clutch. And Ray Allen, of course, tremendous shooter. Then you had the perfect point guard for a team with three big time scores. And that was Rajon Rondo, who didn't want to shoot, didn't look to shoot, just fed the big guys and let them go to work. That was a tremendous team. Don't sleep on the 2008 Boston Celtics. At number two, 2017 Golden State Warriors. I know you thought they might be number one, but don't be a prisoner of the moment. 2017 Warriors were a great team with Kevin Durant and Steph Curry and, of course, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, and the rest of the crew. Third most efficient, third highest rated offense of all time. Absolutely ran through the entire playoffs. 12-0 in the West. 4-1 over the Cavaliers in the finals. 16-1 overall. Can't mess with them. Let's see if they become a dynasty. They're not a dynasty yet. You better slow down with that. They haven't even gone back-to-back -back yet. But they have a chance 
to become a dynasty. So let's see if they do it. But they're number two right now in the 21st century. And at number one, you should know it, that leaves the Shaq Kobe Lakers. That's right. Nobody would have been able to deal with Shaq on this list. No other team could have handled him. And that was the, what year do I pick though? They three-peated, 2000, 2001, 2002. I'm gonna go with the 2001 Shaq Kobe Lakers. Shaq was at the height of his powers and so was Kobe. They ran through the Western Conference playoffs, undefeated, then got to the final. Let me, let me back up. Let me tell you about some of the teams that they waxed in that year. Portland swept them in the first round. That was a Portland team that had Rasheed Wallace, Scottie Pippen, and Steve Smith. And Damon Stoudemire actually had a good year that year as well. <laughs> then they swept the Sacramento Kings of Chris Webber, Peja Stoyakovich, and Vladi Divac. That was a good team that had given them all types of problems in the years past, and they swept them. Then they took it to the next level against those San Antonio Spurs. Tim Duncan smack dab in the middle of his prime. David Robinson, not quite in his prime, but still a top center in the league. And they just ran through those San Antonio Spurs. Then they got hold of the Philadelphia 76ers in the finals. The Sixers did end up getting the game thanks to the greatness of Allen Iverson, but it never really was a series. The Shaq Kobe Lakers of 2001, the team of the 21st century thus far. <laughs> All right, here we are with my man, Eddie House, man. It's What's always happening? good to have you back here in the Fox Studios, man, especially on In The Zone. Look, I just did my top five that I do every week. I did it on my top five NBA champions of the 21st century. And you were on one of the great teams, 2008 Celtics. I had them number three behind the Shaq Kobe Lakers. And then number two was the Golden State Warriors of 2017 with Durant and Steph. Where do you think the 08 Celtics stack up? Well, I would be a damn fool not to say at the top. And Number we, one. Number one. I mean, I think this reason, because we, we were deep. We were really deep. Our second unit, were we were able to extend rest time for our first unit because our second unit was so good. We could battle against the starters because, hell, we battled against them every single day. And it was games. That's how our, that's how our training camp started off. We went to Italy. And our, the second unit took it to the first unit. Y'all were pummeled. I was there. I yeah, was I was we, at the in Rome with y'all. Y'all were killing them. Yeah, we killed them the first day, and that like put them on notice. Doc was like, "We gonna have a special team." And then from then on out, it it was and you know we we had a room full of alphas. So yeah, yeah, it yeah. it wasn't just on the court. We was talking when we got back in the locker room on the bus. Oh, in the morning, so y'all was talking trash to what? the starters. Yeah, for sure. In the morning, we like, "Y'all better bring it again, man. We we'll kick y'all." One more time, <laughs> believe that. But that was healthy competition for us. And I think that's the reason why I would put us there. And, and bias because I played on the team. Yeah. But put all that to the side that I play, I just know I think we were deeper than than, than those teams. So how would y'all deal with Shaq? Hacking. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you did but, have Perk. Yeah, so Kendrick Perk. We, we had Perk, but Shaq, I mean, we had to deal with him like everybody else did. Just take whatever he's going to give us, you know yeah. what I mean? And then try to limit everybody else. You had Shaq and Kobe, and then you had to try to limit all the other guys. You can't let D. Fish get off. You know, you can't let uh, Rick Fox hit some shots yeah. and stuff like that. You, you had to try to minimize what they do while, you know, you deal with what Shaq, because they're going to do what they do regardless. I brought up Golden State in 2017. Obviously, this is a new three-point era, and you were a great three-point <clears throat> shooter. It wasn't as big of a shot back then. Do, how do you think your career would be different if you were playing in today's era? Ooh. Oh, man, I tend not to think about that because you could drive yourself crazy. You know what I mean? Because they handed out a lot of money for three-point shooters. You know what I mean? But, um, I mean, I, if I would have been – I think I would have thrived in it. Obviously, I, I was able to ex have an extended career, 11 years in the league, when that shot wasn't that popular, when I, I was basically doing what guys are doing now and called a specialist mm -hmm. or a higher mm -hmm. gun to where now guys are being the man on their team for doing those type of things. So – uh, I would have been fine, man. I would have been fine. Do you you played against Mahmoud Abdul Rauf? I didn't Did you, play. You, I, I might have played against him at right there at the tail end, but that's one of the guys that I looked up to. Playing. Yeah, he was, he was Chris bad. Jackson at yep, LSU yep, yep, and then yep. Mahmoud. Yeah, he was a, a killer, man. I used to 
like copy his moves and see how he comes off pin downs, how he come off the pick and roll with the quick pull up. People always said I had a quick release. I think he had one of the quickest yeah, release. You yeah. know, he not being a, a bigger guy, so we had similar body types. Well, people, you know, Phil Jackson. Remember a few years ago, he said Steph Curry is like Chris Jackson or Mahmoud Abdul Rauf. And people laughed at him because Mahmoud was really good, but you know he didn't. He wasn't like a perennial All Star. But do you think that comparison was legit? Like that if is. Mahmoud was playing today, yeah. it would have been at another level. Yeah, that's fair because he had. <clears throat> excuse me, his handle was just as good as Steph's. Uh, I think his mid range game. I, I, they play very similar. Steph's a little taller. Mm -hmm. I think maybe Steph can finish around the rim a little bit better than Mahmoud. But I mean. That, that's a very fair comparison. So who you got between Kobe and LeBron? <sighs> uh, that's tough right there. That's a real tough one. It's interesting because most outside, like when I say outsiders, I mean reporters, fans that I talk to, they think LeBron clearly. But when I talk to more ex-players or players, I've talked to more to take Kobe. Yeah, I, Kobe's the closest thing to Jordan that we've yeah. seen. We, I, we might not see another... You know, as much as people hated him while he played, you're going to miss him while he's gone. Um, oh, that, that's a tough one. He got his five. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Uh, only only knock I could say about Kobe, it's the only knock, is in 2006 when we were in, when I was in Phoenix, game seven, literally quit. Li like, that yeah, was a quit. Yeah, that's right. Didn't take no <laughs> shots the whole second half. Basically, it was a point he was trying to prove, like, okay. Because it was all everybody so was like, complaining. Too exactly. much. He's like, oh, you think yeah. I'm shooting? Oh, I won't shoot at all then. But that was at the sacrifice of his whole team. And, you know, and leaders. they had y'all. They didn't yes. have us. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> if he would have did what he did, we it might have been close. Man. It might have been close. No, I think we blew him out that last game, but he didn't take a shot. Yeah, um, yeah. But, yeah, that's uh, – he he yeah. don't get killed for that. LeBron gets killed for Dallas. Yeah, but Kobe don't. It's like pe most people don't even think about it wasn't that. the finals. Yeah, that was the first. round. It was one game too. It was the first, first round. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They were up. Were they up three one? I think they were. They had y'all. Yeah. You know they had y'all. Yeah. Now teammates, uh, let's switch gears. Lonzo Ball, Levar Ball, that. How you've been in many NBA locker rooms? How do you think Levar's comments? affect the teammates of Lonzo with the Lakers? I think it would affect the team because they're a young team. You know what I mean? If they yeah. were a team full of vets, I think it would have been shut down. Uh, and not only shut, not like saying that they would shut LeVar up, but just it would just be shut down like, hey, this ain't an issue. As long as he come in and ball out and do what he do, we don't care what his dad say. As long as his dad ain't talk about nobody inside this circle right here, talking bad about him. We, he could say whatever he wants. Okay. He can have his own thoughts. But within this circle, if he doesn't attack anybody within this circle, we could. So when people say it's got to be hurt in the locker room and all that. Well, that's if they're you, young. Like okay. that, That's a young locker room, so it could be bothering them. They could, it could be a distraction to these kids who are just coming out of high school. I mean, uh, excuse me, coming one year out of college, mm -hmm. not far removed from high school. Or even a young Kyle Kuzma who, who played, yeah, you know, some yeah. years in college. But that could still wear on you if you're a young player and you don't have vets to pull you to the side and, and kind of school you. What do you think Magic Johnson is the president? A lot of people have said he needs to go to LeVar and kind of try to chill him out. What, what do you think Magic should do? Well, LeVar in Lithuania, ain't he? Yeah, so, but he's still making noise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he's way out there, so we, we ain't worried about somebody that's all the way <laughs> on the other side of the world. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think Magic needs to do anything unless it starts – being detrimental to the inside of that locker room, man. Okay. We don't know for sure. Like I said, I don't know if it's bothering them or if it's not. But if it attacks anybody that's within that locker room, you know, like the comments maybe to, about Luke Walton, mm -hmm, you know, could have. Mm -hmm. th that's when you want to say something like, "Ho, ho, ho, man, you're stepping on toes," yeah. you know, right now. So you need to maybe uh, pull back, stay in your lane. You know what I'm saying, and, and just be chill. Stay in your line. <laughs> <laughs> you know, LeBron. Do you think that Levar's presence, presence, and just his bluster and all that will be a deterrent to LeBron going to the Lakers? I don't think that if LeBron want to go to the Lakers, he gonna go. But again, I don't think that would be the best play to, place to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you do add a Paul George, you still got a bunch of young kids over there that yeah. you're gonna be playing with. Yeah. And. That's just not going to get it done in the NBA. You, of course, that 08 Celtics team, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen. 
last week, big controversy about why Ray wasn't at the, uh, the Jersey retirement. What was your take on that whole thing? Well, starting where it, where it started from, where the whole problem began. Yeah, or, you can go through. You can go. Well, there the whole back problem begins want. when Ray wanted to go to Miami. Yeah, didn't pick up the phone and say, "Hey, guys." And I mean, I've heard this from uh, uh, numerous guys that that's basically what it was. They felt like a uh, brother betrayed him. That that was that's the real gripe. And I see it through their eyes, but also see it through Ray's eyes, where he he doesn't have to tell anybody what his next move yeah. is. You know, he yeah, he's his own man and. But from from that, that's where all this created has been created. And it would be nice just to see them, you know, bury the hatchet and just, you know, may go out to dinner one time and just talk it out. You know, well, what I mean? it seemed like Paul and Ray have kind of done that to some degree, but not the not with Rondo and ticket. And yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, yeah. Well, you know, KG, Rondo, they really well, all of them are everybody's really close. But I just think that. I would like them to bury the hatchet because if we ever have a, a reunion where all of us come, how is he not going to be a part mm-hmm. of that? And then when he's there, how is he not going to be interacting? You know, just clicked up. And that ain't how we were. We wasn't clicked up. We was a team through and through. We we did everything together. If it was gambling on the plane, it, um, if it was going out to eat, if it was Halloween parties, Christmas parties, we did everything together. So that would be kind of uh, that that would be weird. So I'm hoping that they can you know, mend all whatever wounds that they have and make it better. It was always a lot of talk about Rondo butting heads with Doc and all that. What was the genesis of that stuff? Well, well, you got a, a headstrong point guard and a headstrong head coach. Mm-hmm. And at times they just, it would be like that sometimes. You know, I'd be having to, Rondo, chill out, man. I'm f- <laughs> Can I say that? <laughs> we'll my, 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 bad. Yeah. <laughs> my bad. But, uh, yeah, he'll be like, man, you know, forget him, man. I I ain't tripping off him, so I ain't stunting off him. I'll be like, nah, man, that's our coach. Let's, yeah. He trying to, he want the best for you. That's all it is. Let's try to lock back in so we can get our work done. But that's healthy, though. You know what I mean? Those are healthy butts of the head. It was nothing that ever festered and stayed around. It was all for the greater good for the team. Was Rondo even like that? His Because the year y'all won it, that was just his second year. Remember, everybody thought that was going to be a weakness at right. point guard, was he that headstrong even then when he wasn't really known? Yeah, well, the thing is, uh, quiet dude, if you don't know him, really. But mm-hmm. then if you know him, you know, is you could t- he's very competitive, everything he does. So that that was uh, he, Rondo on the team. He was he was he was like that, but he got more as he was a bigger part year in and year out. He got more and more okay. of the leader, you know, because he's basically you know, at, at the helm. He's like yep. the quarterback. So yep. the more confidence he got, the more confidence other guys have in him, the more he was, like, locked in. And, you know, all the good ones are ass <laughs> You know what I'm saying at times. And that's when he yeah. was, you know, that's when he started developing that. And that's yep. what, but that's what makes him. You're right. You can look at MJ had his issues, Isaiah Thomas, the legend yeah. Isaiah Th- Even the... This this new Isaiah Thomas guy, his, the 21st his century issue. Isaiah yeah. Thomas. <laughs> I don't know what to call him, the second coming, whatever. But um, you said on Undisputed earlier that um, you felt LeBron quit during the the 11 finals against. Quit might have been the wrong word. I okay. just don't think that he he wasn't there. You know, he didn't show up. I don't. He didn't quit on it. It wasn't like he's like, man, I'm not yeah, playing yeah, on y'all. Yeah, yeah. He just wasn't there. He wasn't himself. So I take that quit. I, I used the wrong word with okay. with that. But. Um, yeah, he just wasn't there, man. I don't know what it was. He did. He wasn't engaged, and you could almost like see it in his eyes at times during timeouts. He was somewhere else. He wasn't. You know what LeBron looked like yeah, when he's yeah. locked in. You yeah. know what I mean? And you could see he, it watching on TV. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You and you could see that, but it it was it wasn't there. It seemed like it happened in the middle of the series. No, it did. When yeah, y'all it, were up like two, it was like, it was like game game two after we lost game two. Then we won game uh-huh. three, and that's where. I don't know. Even with game three, he just wasn't himself. You yeah. know what I mean? He just he just didn't dominate. He didn't. He was didn't. he the same in the locker room away from the game? Like as Joe, well, you, you know, you know, in the finals, is, you know, in the, in the finals is in the playoffs and the finals is different. You're yeah, you're in the locker room, but everybody is like yeah, okay. locked in on theirs. You yeah. know, it's not like regular season around. game. Yeah, we joking and no, nah, it wasn't like that. So. I was in my own zone. Everybody else was. The only time that we really kind of got out of our our mental zone was when we would hit the court, and then we start having to talk like, "Hey, man, no, on that pick and roll, you got to show a little harder mm-hmm. so I could get, you know, that." Mm-hmm. But besides, we were locked in, and I didn't see it until we were actually in the series, like his 
his demeanor was totally different. It wasn't it wasn't the king. See, I felt like when he left Cleveland, went to Miami, I, I felt like he sold himself short because I actually thought he was good enough to help those carry those role players in Cleveland, maybe to a title, you know. Um, but it looked like mentally he really wasn't ready, you know, where he had to learn how to win. It showed in 2011. Um, but now, you know, he's won, you know, three championships. He's obviously older, more mature. And there's talk about him going to Golden State. <laughs> I don't think he'll do yes. it. What would your thought be, though, if he did do that? I don't know if I would. I probably would never watch a game they play. It I wouldn't even be fun. I'd right? probably watch all the other games, say who's who's jockeying for position, who's trying to get that that other side, who's trying to knock them off in the Western Conference. But, yeah, no, it wouldn't even be fun to watch. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it wouldn't even yeah. be fun to watch them play. I mean, it would it, it'd be unfair. It, it, it would be crazy. What do you – there's all the talk about him, what he should do next summer. If if he came to you and was just like, yo, man, what what do you think I should do? What would your – what would you – Advice would you give? Well, I think his best, if he doesn't go to Houston, right? Because that would be the you only You think that's way. the number one? I, that, that To me, that would have to be if you're going to go to the Western Conference. Because okay. if you go to any other team, maybe San Antonio. I was going to say, I could see him in San Antonio. Like, I don't think he'll go there, yeah. but maybe, I think that would be a good Maybe fit. San Antonio, mm-hmm. but does San Antonio have enough three-point shooting to put them over the top of the Warriors? Because it always comes back to, to that mm-hmm. for me with the Warriors. Can you match those three-point shots? If you cannot match those three, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. Even if they have an off night and you're not a three-point shooting team, all it takes is a, a two-minute span. Before mm-hmm. you know it, they did knock down four threes and you're looking up down ten. You know what I mean? They're like, man, what, what just happened to our yeah. league? You know what I mean? But uh, I, I, I think Houston is a, a spot where they'll have a chance to come out of the West. Okay. Anywhere else. You stay in Cleveland because then you have a, a, a great shot of coming to the yeah. finals every every single year. How You played with LeBron in Miami, so you know his game. I mean, look, I was wrong about Chris Paul fitting in there. He's Me fitting too. in yeah, perfectly. And I do look at if LeBron did go there, <laughs> I don't really know how that would work either. You think that would – I mean, maybe they're all good enough and smart enough they'd make it work, but – it looks like it'd be a challenge. Yeah, that's the same thing that, that I thought about Houston was like, would that work? But well, I think when you get professionals, you know, veterans, that they've made their money mm-hmm. and they made their bones in this league by scoring or dominating the ball, but now they're trying to win. You know, it, it happens to them all. When they're trying to win, they kind of tweak their game a little bit. They're still the killer that they were. But they pick and choose spots. It's not like they have to dominate it. They let other guys get yeah. off. They understand that other guys have to get off for you to be successful. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. as as good, great as Jordan and Pippen was, you needed B.J. Armstrong to hit shots. Yeah. You needed Cartwright to hit that baseline jumper. You needed Horace Grant to hit elbow jumper. Paxson and Kerr knocking down shots. You needed all those things, and that just helped them. Yeah. You know, once yeah. you get your yeah. teammates feeling good and they're confident now. You can't help as much because this guy's hitting shots too now. It, it might only have eight, nine points, but them eight and nine points was when he helped too yeah. hard and got stuck because he was worried about this guy. Now the lane opens up and things get real, real easy. But I think because of they, their basketball IQ is so high, I think that they could make it work. And I think that would be the only, that to me, the legitimate spot that where they would have a chance to come out the West. Besides that, man, stay in the East and go to as many finals as you can. Mm-hmm. And try it because you can't win it unless you in it. Yep. You know, you don't yep. want to go somewhere and you like he goes to the Lakers or he go to the Clippers and gets put out in the second round. Exactly. Like, what does that do to his legacy? Yeah. Then, yep. then you think they hate you think they're talking bad on him now. Then, then they, they really might say you killing. only got to that many finals because you was in the East. Right. Yeah. Exactly. What you saw the moves Cleveland made over the deadline, which obviously they playing a lot better. Do you give them? I assume I think they clearly win in the East. Um, tell me your feelings on that, and then do you think they could actually challenge the Warriors or maybe Houston if they come out? Well, I think they got significantly better when they made the trade. They got rid of the locker room issues that Mm -hmm. they had. That's the number one thing that they needed to do. They did that. Then they got younger, faster, more athletic, and they got guys that have played in big situations. George Hill in the Eastern Conference Finals playing with San Antonio. Um, and then on top of all of that, you got guys that can create off the dribble, which they have been missing. 
You know, LeBron yeah. was the only one really getting it. Everybody's like, oh, they're missing Kyrie. Now they got Jordan Clarkson, who to me is underrated. Uh, I think he can yeah. get, you know, he could score, and he's bigger than what a lot of uh, than what people think he is. Mm-hmm. You know, he's about like six four, yeah. six three, six four. Um, and then I like Rodney Hood. I like his his game. He's another guy that can create, mm-hmm. you know, and we know what George Hill could do. It could take some of the onus off of LeBron James as far as bringing up the ball every time, initiating the offense. You have other guys that can do it, and then when he makes a play, he kicks it. It's not just to a spot-up shooter. They're going to have to close out, guard the shot, and guard the drive. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's where they got better. They closed the gap to the Warriors, but didn't put them over the top, and I, I got them coming out the East, too. So you got you, you still think the Warriors will beat them? Yeah, I still think the Warriors. I just don't think that they have they, – they just won't have enough. I don't think they have enough three-point shooting still. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, it comes to that. I don't think they have enough. They have some, you know, up in – LeBron's up and down. Clarkson is, you know, he's not, he's not yeah. a knockdown. Yeah. George yep. Hill is not a knockdown either. You know, yep. the guys that you're thinking is going to be a knockdown. They can get the, hot, but they ain't yeah, really knockdown. Yeah, the same knockdown is going to be Kyle Korver. Yeah. And, you know. Who Jeff. they might have trouble having on the floor. Right, exactly. For the defensive purposes. Um, the Warriors have talked about, you know, lacking sense of urgency. Steve Kerr said they're fried, you know, going into the All-Star break. Is, is that just the regular season doesn't mean that much to them because they pretty much know they're going – to the finals or that's the only goal for them uh, or what you have any concerns about them because of that? No, you know, January, February, those are the dog days of the mm-hmm. NBA. So you're not going to get, you're going to get some of the worst play out of really good teams during that stretch. A lot of times people are just trying to get to the all-star break so they could press the reset button. And I think that's what the Warriors needed to do. If you've been around a team, this is going on, they're trying to go to four straight finals. Think about all the time they spend with each other. If you spend t- time like that with your own brother, you're going to end up arguing. You know, <laughs> it's just not going to be the same. You know, you're not you're going to tune out the, your parents' voice because you're, yeah, like, tired yeah, of yeah. hearing it. So I, they needed that break because you think when, when they go to the finals, they win it or lose it, then they have, like, two months off, two, three months off, actually, like, two months, and a lot of them go overseas and do all this. So there yeah, is yeah, constant yeah, basketball. Yeah. They never have an opportunity to just take a deep breath, relax, think about just family, their self for a little bit, and then get back to basketball. It's like nonstop basketball, and it could be overload. But they understand that with these last 24 games, what they're going to try to do is just get their defense back on track and then start playing for each other again because – I think that's the one thing that, that they lack this year is not being as good of a defensive team mm-hmm. as they've been. And they've mm-hmm. been turning the ball over a lot. Mm-hmm. Now, you played for Mike D'Antoni. Yep. And, I, and a lot of people, when they look at the Rockets' record and how well they're playing, they say, but D'Antoni don't get it done in the playoffs and all that. What's your take on that? You think he's matured or grown enough where that won't be the reason they lose if they lose? Well, that remains to be seen. It's just like last year when – you know, they lost in the playoffs, and James Harden is like his usage rate. They was just using him too much. Mm-hmm. He wore down. He got tired. They talk about Chris Paul. You know, he can never, excuse me, he can never get it done. It's like in the playoffs, he yeah. don't show up. Dan Tony. so you have these three pieces that seem like always fall short in the playoffs. At some point, they can get over the hump. So I'm not going to dis- discount them and be like, yeah, no, nah, they can't get mm-hmm. there. They've improved defensively. You know, they uh, – they're efficient as hell on offense. And if they continue to do that, they definitely can give the a run. I don't think the the, the way you, I don't think the lights are too bright. You okay. know what I mean? Yep. They can't be yep. too bright. That's yep. they're too good. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. Now you playing for D'Antoni, I mean, what was it like defensively? Because you were in Phoenix with yeah. him. Because I heard, man, y'all didn't hardly even talk about defense. No, we like, did. We, we spent like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> How different is that from every other like good team you were on? Well, uh, night and day, you know. You, most of our clips when you're on good teams, you take your defensive breakdowns first. You're watching all of your defensive mistakes, and you're breaking that down. And that that's going to take more time than your offensive clips. Mm-hmm. Offensive clips is more about spacing, uh, movement, moving the ball, seeing what you're supposed to be seeing. As defense is like, okay, your job is this. You need to make sure that we're, we can't. If we do it this way, this was has to happen. Okay. You cannot allow to get split. If we're going to blitz the uh, pick and roll, big man, you can't get split. You know what I mean? It's like those type of things. But uh, when I was in Phoenix, we we spent, Mark Ivoroni was our our defensive coach, and we would spend 
minimal time. Jimmy Jackson to tell you that minimal time on defense and all time on offense. But I don't think that we also had those type of defensive players. We had offensive players, guys that just was going out there scoring. You know, yeah. we didn't have any lockdown. To, uh, Roger Bell probably was the only lockdown defender, defender that we had. On but the, on the but squad. is it so? Is it? Do you think though, if y'all had emphasized it, y'all would could have been better on defense? Yeah, of course. We we're we're pros. You know, if yeah. if, if we were, it wasn't a point of emphasis day in and day out. The point of emphasis was we got to get these points up. We're gonna outscore everybody. So that was more so a of the mindset of our team was we coming in, we gonna outscore, we are gonna get it up as fast as we can, we are gonna get up more shots, and. And and that's that. That we, must have we, felt we gotta like get, heaven. Oh man, what? <laughs> that's the only, that's the reason why I went there. So I, I had an opportunity to go either there or Miami. Pat Riley was like, oh, "Yeah, man, I want you to kind of know. It's, uh, you was here three years. I see. I seen you mature. You got a lot better. Uh, I want you to come back." And I told him, "I was like, man, it's between y'all and Phoenix right now." He's like, "You should you should come here." I was like, "I think I'm gonna go to Phoenix though." He's like, "You're making a mistake. They won the championship that year." Uh, that was it. I think you told me that before. Yeah, they won the championship yeah, that yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, that's the reason why I went. It was just like free flowing. He doesn't. As long as you take your shot that you work on, he doesn't care. So what would you prefer, the Pat Riley, Pat Riley style of? I mean, I know y'all was working your tails off when you played for him, versus the Mike D'Antoni system where it's it's just a ton of Can fun. Can we get a mix of both? That would be perfect. <laughs> right. That'd be perfect. No. Um, <laughs> Honestly, I prefer uh, – this is not the winning. Yeah, you almost taking winning out. Yeah, yeah, just take winning out. I would prefer Dan Tony a little looser, more fun. You're able to – you're not getting ran into the ground in practice. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, I, I would prefer that style as far as that, that approach. But if we're talking about flat out just trying to win things and get things done and pay attention to detail – uh, you have to go with Pat Riley. Did Spolster work y'all like that to work y'all as hard as Pat he, Riley? No, not, not as hard. That's one thing he learned that he he was different. You know, okay. very similar in a lot of things, a lot of ways that Pat approached the game and approached his team. Spo does the same thing, except the fact that he ha- kind of has a pulse of his team and understands. Hey man, sometimes I gotta take my foot off the gas a little bit, let them get a break. You know, not mm-hmm. go so hard. Maybe have a longer film session a shorter practice, you know, not not tape, you know, yeah. just like walkthrough type stuff. So that's the one thing that he learned, and, and it, that's what you have to do. you, you got to evolve. What was something when you were in Miami, what's something about LeBron that we wouldn't know? Like just as a teammate you might know, but the average person wouldn't know, average fan. What would – the average fan would know that he is like a big kid. You know what I'm saying? He was like a bit. He just wants to laugh, have fun, play serious business on the court. Mm-hmm. But like, a, away from the court in the locker room, <laughs> some of the things he, some of the things he was doing that locker room, man, it, it, it would be pretty funny. So he's he's a, like a big kid, man, just having fun. And you can see he love loves the game. He loves being around his teammates and stuff like that. So um, that's probably one thing that nobody would really know. They just see the LeBron interview and him on the court but mm-hmm. oh he's he could be a big goofball at times I was one of the first I, the first I've heard say this and I think people have picked it up but I don't know if I'm the first to think it I felt like LeBron is kind of a system unto himself like he, the way most of the teams he's on play the same way where it's kind of focused around him creating for everybody uh did you feel that way and how tough is it to adjust to playing with him versus playing in other places easy to pl- adjust you're playing with the greatest pl- player on the planet r- at that time and right now who is a willing passer who's looking for you mm-hmm. you know who wants you to get off because he knows they help him get off very easy to adjust and to your point about him being a system and that's what if you get him you're gonna have to tweak some things yeah. you got to make it about him you know, and build around that. So that's why it seems like wherever he went, it was like yeah. he's his own system because you got to build around that. Yeah. Adam Silver's talked about changing the format to the, I mean, somewhat to the best eight teams in each conference still, but, you know, they would play. One to yeah, yeah. What, personally, I feel like you should just take the, you should even out the schedule. 
So the West and the East are playing roughly the same schedule. Because it's still not fair because right. Western teams are playing a better, tougher schedule. So if you even out the schedule and then go 1 through 16, just best records, that's how I think. But what's your take on playoff formats? To stuff? me, it sounds good in theory, the 1 through 16. But what if you get a team, uh, Sacramento, that makes the playoffs and has to play? Uh, Boston or something. Boston okay. or Miami or anything like that or Portland going down from the top to the bottom. You know what I mean? Like the travel, I think that would, that's where the would problems. Would that be a big deal? I mean, y'all travel all the time. Yeah, but, but, not, but it's just... not like that, though. You know what I mean? It's not like a cross country, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, in, mm-hmm. in a series. Cause yeah, it, one, it's gonna, one, one. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Four. So there'll be that will be a lot of travel right there. Yeah, so you just like like And plus the, the, there's, day, there's no days off at, at certain. So well, you, you get, get like back to back, then you get a day off. No, no back to backs though in the playoffs. Oh, they so them. yeah, it would, you usually get a, at least one day, but maybe two. Sometimes you get two. They, they kind of spread it out, but um, you know, it, it'd be it'd be interesting. It would be interesting, but I just that travel I think would could bother. All right, let me let me hit you with some rapid fire before you go. Best teammate you ever had, Rashid Wallace. Really? Why? He just man. If you ask anybody that played with him, it's just who, who, who or she it is, what he stands for. He's he does little small things, man. Little things that, you know. For example, he took us to the World Series. The whole team. We in Philly. They're playing the Yankees, and he rents out a suite and has all of us at the World Series. I've never mm-hmm. been to a World Series before in my life, but first time I ever went with him. Yeah. You know, he little things like that, like. But just on the court stuff too, talking to him, being a mentor to not only the younger guys, but chopping it up with, you know, me with with vets as well Mm -hmm. about just experiences and and just life experiences and stuff like that. Just man, just a good brother. Shout out to she. Now he, you know, I dealt with him in the media, and we we never had any run-ins or anything. But he wasn't one to talk to the media very much. You know, why do you think that was? Well. It just that was him because he's really Cause he intelligent knows, yeah. and he had a lot of good things to say. Because sometimes didn't you go. get your what you say can get misconstrued. Yeah, you know true. what I mean. And so I could say something and you can interpret it totally different from what I really meant. Go out there write something, and so and yeah, I yeah, think he yeah, just yeah. avoided that. Okay, okay. Best Kevin Garnett story. I think uh, the one of the best because it's a bunch of them but one of the best was when we were at Ruth's Chris man and we was arm wrestling and <laughs> just the whole team like y'all had a team. contest yeah we was in the back I don't know how it came up but we just started we just started going and next thing you know it was him and big baby so I go against Patrick uh Patrick O'Brien right and I'm like <laughs> I'm like oh I think I'm toe something up so really? I messed yeah so I messed my elbow up so Kevin goes against big baby and he like boom they go he's just standing there like and then he just. KG? KG. So he beat Big I'm Baby? I'm the alpha male. I'm the alpha dog in this. B- <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so that was that was one of the best stories. He took his shirt off and all tight. He was, it was juiced in there, man. So that was. a uh, Wow. That was the championship, him and Big Baby? No, they was we was just y'all was just doing yeah, whoever. just doing whoever. So he I would never have thought he Neither, beat Big Baby. And we all thought Big Baby was going to get him, but. That's why he took his shirt off and was hollering. I mean, we're in Ruth Chris in the back. We got the back room, and I mean, there's other people in there. I mean, he's screaming at the top of his lungs. So. <laughs> it was dope. It was dope. So, so um, he was deceptively strong, obviously. Yeah. I guess. Did yep. you ever feel like? I mean, obviously you didn't guard him, but you could feel it. Oh, you could see him a, when he's in the weight room when he's getting down. You could, yeah, he was like one of those wiry, strong cats. You wow. know what I mean? Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, will Ray Allen and the 08 Celtics ever truly make up? I hope they do. I hope they do because, you know, it, it's – I've seen it from both from both perspectives, and, you know, it, it's, it's not that serious. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 you, yeah. You know, it's not that serious. It's something that could be talked out. It's not like somebody, uh, you know, cheated with somebody's wife. Mm-hmm, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's nothing that serious. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, it was just, it's just a miscommunication, misunderstanding, misinterpretation, and all, all those things combined, and – Hopefully they can. Well, you know, it was the talk about Rondo was getting everybody together yeah. for Rome or something. Yeah. Did that that ever happen? No, nah, that never came to fruition. I think they're trying to do something again this year. It's hard to try to get guys together, though. Yeah, you know yeah, how hard yeah. that is. Um, but, yeah, I, I hope they will be able to do it. But, again, you know, guys feel their way and their head strong. And I think that's where we're at right now. Everybody's just like, 
hey, nah, I'm standing on mine. So, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Best Kobe Bryant story from the 2008 NBA Finals. Well, I was in the on the left wing in the corner. This was uh, was this game. I think this might have been the game after we came back. This game was it four, five, game five, I believe. And uh, I shot a shot. And he, I mean, he was so high above. I don't know how I got it off. And it yeah. got off and I hit and he was, he came back to me. He's like, no, next time I'm going to throw that shit. I'm like, please, you should have <laughs> threw it then. He was like, man, you see, I had my whole armpit over the thing. I could have just did like that. I said, well, you didn't. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that was, that was my best one. Got David Beckham was in the background of that shot. I got that picture at home. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, okay. Now you got MJ over Jordan, right? MJ over Jordan? Jordan I mean, I... <laughs> <laughs> MJ over yeah, LeBron. Yeah, for sure. Best player. What about Steve Nash stories? Man, Steve Steve is so cold. That's what be, like he's so unorthodox. I've never seen a player like this. You know, Kyrie kind of implements some of that type of game, you know, like jumping off the wrong foot, fading, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. left hand. I mean, Steve had it. Steve had it all and it all come from him playing soccer. His footwork mm. is is crazy, man. He has some of the best feet that I've been around. You know wow. what I mean? He's not the fastest. He's not yeah. the strongest. You know what I mean? He's, he's not the quickest. Doesn't he has an impeccable handle though, and his shot is cool. But he could see the floor. He was a great leader. Yep. Eddie House, yep. always great to have you for in the sure, zone, sure. man. I appreciate it's it. It's all good, like man. Like that that hoodie too. We need to hook a brother up with one. All right. Did I you got see you. the? Did you you saw all eyes on me? I'm sure. Yeah. What'd you think? Well, I'm a big Pac fan, so it was almost an opportunity to see him again. You know what I mean? Okay. Just, the dude just, looked, looked dead oh on his gosh. mannerism when yeah, he was rapping. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I'm like, <laughs> I ain't never Pac seen nobody rap yeah, like that yeah. in the booth. I you know, like, that hype. I was like, is that Pac for real? But it, was, it wasn't It was great. I mean, but you got to think, like, how long could his story really been? He was only, he hit the scene, what, like, 92 mm-hmm. and was dead in 96. So... What could you really draw from? Yeah, a lot of I talked to some people that just felt they were huge Pac fans, and they they didn't like it. But I thought it showed him in a little different light. Like it, I mean, I mean, people may have known he had been, he was into Shakespeare and you know how yeah, intelligent right. he was and stuff. I felt some of these cats just they just wanted to see the thug yeah. Pac. You know, but what I'm they saying? look what the work ethic. How he was like signed with Death Row was like okay, I got to do three hours. Yep. He knocked them shits out yep. like that. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. All right, my man. All right, cool, Peace. bro. Yep. yep. Have a good one.